Hi, everybody. It's no secret that Hollywood puts out the very best movies at the end of the year because they want it to be fresh in the minds of the Academy Award voters that their best movies could get an Academy Award. Still really important for marketing because Academy Award winning films typically will make a lot more money. Case in point, the very awful movie Green Book that won the Academy Award a couple years ago, just terrible movie really, as far as Academy Award winners, it was one of the worst. There have been others that really didn't deserve it and got it. And there have been some that I think like Braveheart, Shape of Water, that definitely deserved it as best picture of the year. But I mean, let's face it, Ordinary People beat out Raging Bull in 1980? Come on, it's a joke. They give the award sometimes. How did Moonlight beat La La Land? That's ridiculous. La La Land was hands away the best movie that year and they gave it to Moonlight, which was also a good film, nowhere near as good as La La Land, not even in the same category. So don't write everything, you know, your hopes on Academy Award being the best movie of the year, it's not. But let's say to this movie that I saw tonight, and I've seen some really good ones this week after the terrible Matrix sequel just stunk, um, I saw some really good ones. Licorice Pizza was excellent. I thought House of Gucci was superb and also the Ricardo movie, the uh, Being the Ricardos that I just saw tonight, excellent movie, more like a stage play, Aaron Sorkin film, so that was superb. But I gotta tell you, hands down now, I've got a new favorite, and that's the one I saw tonight, and it's called Nightmare Alley, directed and written, co-written and co-produced by Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. I never can pronounce the first name right. Guillermo del Toro. He is Spanish director, but the film is in English, and uh, it's just, it's, it's like an Alfred Hitchcock film, but better. And you know Hitchcock made some really, really great movies. And I think if Hitchcock was still alive and making films today, he might have made a film comparable. Although Del Toro has a unique visual style that sort of runs through all of his films. And if you've seen any of his films before, some of them that are more popular that you might think of, Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy series, and of course Shape of Water, just to name a few. But he's made many, many other films that are really worth digging up. He's a really wonderful director, has a great sense of humor in some of his films, but typically he doesn't make comedic films. They're not comedies. They're dark, mysterious films with very interesting characters, and this one really just topped them all, in my opinion. I think it's the best movie he made. It's a uh, disturbing film, maybe, in some ways, not necessarily offensive in any way, it's not at all. It's based on an original film that was made in the 40s, 1947, I believe, uh, that was had the same title, Nightmare Alley, starring Tyrone Power. And that's an older film, and of course, it's more toned down, based on a novel. And the film takes place beginning in 1936, and you visit a carnival. And I gotta say, the art direction, the staging, the costumes, the cinematography, just superb. You really feel like you're back in the old days of this film. It's a wonderful cast. Bradley Cooper, it's his standout performance. Bradley Cooper is never given a performance this just breathtaking and dramatic and significant, in my opinion, and he's a terrific actor. He's had some great roles in movies. I think this is one of his very finest. Uh, Ron Perlman is in, he's in a lot of Del Toro films. You have Willem Dafoe and Richard Jenkins is wonderful. And there's a lot of great character actors in the film. Tony Collette. Um, I just, I just love this film because the first half, pretty much close to the first half, is about hip, this character and his name, Stan. Um, he's basically a roadie guy, a drifter during the 30s. It's the Depression. He's unemployed. He's working for a dollar a day, doing hard labor and a carnival. But he's kind of a smart guy. He's got wits about him and. He works his way into a job in the carnival, and then he starts learning from a so-called magician or mentalist, a guy who basically purports to be able to read people's minds and give them predictions and spiritual seances and things like that. And of course, it's all contrived. None of it's legitimate, really. Although the man he learns from tells him at one point that, you know, you better respect God. And of course, you know Stan doesn't do that. He's not really a very spiritual man. He's a hustler. He's basically a con artist or an early day con artist. And not in the traditional form that he's out to con people, but he's always pulling the wool over people's eyes. It's the old saying, the love of money is the root of all evil. And it applies to this character, to Stan. 
So he goes about developing a little bit better act for himself, gets out of the carnival, takes his sweetheart with him, and that's Rudy Mara, and she's fabulous too. And they go off and they really start being a little more sophisticated in their act, being able to read people's minds, tell them about lost, dead relatives, parents, family members, and giving them information. Of course, it's all a con. They have their ways of getting this information and making it appear they're legitimate. They're legitimate uh, spiritual people, even though they're not. Okay, so the plot thickens. As the story develops, we later see a, an analyst, a psychiatrist, and played by Kate Blanchett. And boy, this is a great performance. She's always really good in film. She's a terrific actress, actor. And in the film, it really gets more psychological in the second half of the film. There are plot twists and turns. I'm not going to give any spoilers to anybody, but let me just say this. The film is very dark. There's a theme of man's inhumanity to man um, that is woven into the storyline. We see the backdrop. World War II is happening, so it, it takes place up to 1941. And then there's a, a, a situation where our lead character here, played by Bradley Cooper, he's now faced with a dilemma. Is he going to stay with this woman he purports to love? Or is this other relationship with the therapist going to take over? Which way is he going to go? Is he going to sell out and keep going for the money? Or is he an authentic, genuine man that really is going to stick to his word and have some integrity? Well, I'll leave that for you in the film to watch yourself because I don't want to spoil it for you. I just want to leave it open for you to go watch this film. It is violent at times, but not overly so. There are maybe four violent scenes in the whole film. And most of them are very, very brief, just a few seconds. There's one towards the end, and there again, I might be spoiling it a little bit, but there's a little bit of action at the end, that's all I'll say, that is just makes your heart stop. I was cringing in my seat, twisting and turning like a little kid, thinking, oh my God, it was thrilling, folks. Very, very suspenseful, very, very exciting. And I just love the imagery. Del Toro has a gift for the, the camera and knowing how to compose images that are unlike any other director I've ever seen. So I'm going to give this the highest, strongest recommendation of any film I've seen so far this year. i still got a couple other good ones to watch. This film uh, by Jane Campion, I want to see that one. And there's a couple others. I haven't seen West Side Story yet. I'm sure that's going to be decent. But I'm going to say right off the bat here, I think it's going to be very difficult for any film to top Nightmare Alley. I saw it in an art cinema tonight on Sunday night alone. There was nobody else in the theater. And I, I was aghast because I thought, why aren't more people coming to see this movie? Well, the patron, that, the, the, not the patron, but the actual owner of the theater there that I saw it, uh, told me that some people didn't like the film. They found it a little off-putting, disturbing, because it is so dark. And I thought, well, I get that, that people that are very sensitive to this kind of subject matter um, it might not be their cup of tea, but for me, uh, I like films that are, have authenticity to them. Even though it's a fictional story, it's very much rooted and based in the characters of real life people. There are real people, I'm sure, like this in the real life in the world, I mean, out there. And so it's, it's very genuine to the heart of how people actually behave that go off the rails and lose a sense of their own humanity and then start preying on other people even though they may be very good looking and charming and seem like they're helping the people and maybe in their own mind, they've convinced themselves that they are helping people. That's what Stan does. He thinks he's really helping people, but all along he really knows better that deep inside, he's really not a nice guy. And basically he's using people just for the money and it even is beyond the money for him. As much as he is excited and addicted to this idea of making money, it's more this power he feels he has over people, manipulating people, people that are very vulnerable. And of course, that leads to a situation where it goes full circle. From the beginning of the film, we kind of come back to a situation, chickens coming home to roost, and there's no pun intended because there's a scene early in the film where we have a geek. And if you don't know what a geek is, uh, it's in a sideshow. It's a really freaky, weird human being, half human, half monster that just doesn't speak really, just snarls around, aggressive and violent, and they throw him a chicken, and he literally takes a live chicken and bites the head off and starts eating the chicken raw. Now, when I watch that scene, it's very graphic, it's brutal, it's hard to watch, but of course it's brief, and at the end of the film, they remind us no animals were harmed in the making of this film. 
So that was staged. That was not really a live chicken. Somehow it was a prop that looked real. So just be aware of that, folks. It is a disturbing film for some people, but I highly recommend it because life itself can be disturbing. And all of us have a dark shadow side, a part of us we generally don't want to admit it's there. And that's what this film explores, the dark side of humanity. And of course, there are a lot of people in the film that are more noble, kind, benevolent, decent human beings are the backdrop of the contrast of the, the protagonist here. I'm talking about Bradley Cooper character, Stan, and you see that contrasted with more moral people that have a moral compass and know what decency is all about. You just got to see this film. Trust me, it's a thriller, it's exciting, and it's a great finish to the film. And I think you'll really, really like it if this is your kind of thing. Think of it as kind of a horror film that's not overly graphic, but yet uh, it's kind of in the same vein as Silence of the Lambs, which is, is nothing storyline like that movie. But it, and not as graphic or violent as Silence of the Lambs, not nearly as violent as that movie. And yet it has that same kind of feeling, the buildup and the drama, the climax just knocked me almost out of my seat and I laughed at the very end. I'm just laughing out loud. I'm not sure that other audience members would find the ending funny, but I had to laugh hysterically at it because I realized this is what will happen in life if you don't stick to your principles and you're not a good person. See this film, folks. Nightmare Alley. You won't regret it.